Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. So this video is just going to be a relatively quick one about breeding vampire crabs. So there's a lot of videos online that either oversimplify things or overcomplicate them. I'm just going to go through and explain how I've been doing this. Um, I've had a lot of success, so I'm just going to share that with you guys. So if you're new and you haven't subscribed to this channel, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. And if you've already been here for a while, thanks for the support so far. So we'll get straight into it. The first thing you need to take into account when breeding vampire crabs is that they breed super easily and you only need to give them a few basic things. So the first thing is you need to give them a decent environment, a tank that is quite heavily planted with an 80% land and 20% water split. You can set this up however you like. I've got a lot of guides showing you how to do this. Once you've got this set up, you can introduce your crabs. So the most important thing is to keep your male to female ratio set to one male to two females. You can go one male and one female. You just need to keep an eye on the male not harassing the female too much. And just to be aware, the male will generally breed the female within the first probably 24 hours. So if you stop seeing the female, that's probably what's happened and she's already gone into hiding. But we'll cover that in a little bit more detail in a second. Something else important to note is that some males are absolute monsters so it is possible that if you have a male and a female the male will rip the female to pieces and that's kind of just part of life with these crabs so hopefully it doesn't happen to you but it is something that can so be aware of it and keep an eye on what your crabs are actually doing. If you haven't seen them for a while just check on them at night and you should get a rough idea of what's going on. You can generally leave the male in there for about a week or two. Um, once you stop seeing the female, you'll generally know she's pregnant because she'll go into her burrow or wherever she's decided to hide and you probably won't see her very often. If you do spot the female roaming around, you can generally tell she's pregnant because you'll see the crabs or the eggs hanging underneath her. So that's one way to spot it. Other than that, Generally, you need to wait about a month to a month and a half before the babies will be born. Usually, the female will come out of her burrow or hole or wherever she's been hiding and go straight into the water, and that's where she'll give birth to the babies. So they'll essentially be crawling everywhere and hanging around the water section. If you are curious on whether the babies have been born yet, just pay close attention to your water line and the water section, and you should be able to spot them crawling around. They're generally a browny sort of a clear color, so they're not impossible to see, but you will need to look very closely as they can sort of camouflage depending on the texture and terrain they're living in. As soon as you spot the baby vampire crabs, the most important thing to do next is remove the adults. So if you wanna have the best possible survival rate, the adults need to get removed to a different tank. Alternatively, you can catch the babies, but it's way easier to catch the adults because you've generally only got one or two, and the babies you can have between 20 and 80. This is what I usually do. It's the easiest way to do it. Just have a tank spare to move the adults to, and you can just leave the babies in the original tank they were in. If you don't do this, the adults will eat most of the babies, if not all of them. Though if you don't really want a increasing population of crabs, you can just let natural selection take its course, and you might end up with one or two that survive but that's entirely chance. Just keep in mind that the adults will have up to a year to eat the babies, so it's quite a long time for them to have to evade and survive without being captured. Once you've isolated your baby vampire crabs, the rest of the process is really easy. You just need to feed them a little bit. At the start, I usually just started with uh, fish food, and they survive off the other stuff living in the tank. So all the microfauna, so you've got springtails and whatever other little creatures are in there. And they will eat the moss and other little plant forms that are growing in the tank. So the fish food is just a little extra sustenance and something that helps them grow a little faster. So a little extra bit of protein and some good nutrients. From a couple of crabs that I've had breed here recently, I've had about 50 crabs survive. So I would guess that's close to a 100% success rate. And it doesn't really matter how many you have in the small tank. I've had these growing in this little tank here for about seven months now. And there's at least 50 in this five gallon tank. And being so small, it doesn't really matter. They have plenty of space. And at such a young age, they're not very aggressive. Generally, once they're about a year old and they've got full colors, they will start to become more territorial and the fighting begins. So that's the stage where I'm at now. I've got quite a lot of males too. Now, here's something I have a question for you guys about. So my last batch of babies, or last two batches, one was primarily male, about 95%, and the other was primarily female, about 95%. So my question is, does anyone know what determines which sex the crabs are going to be? Is it entirely random, or is something environmental causing it? 
Is it temperature? Is it humidity? Is it the environment they're living in, the pH of the water? Is there any sort of a detrimental aspect that determines what sort of sex you're going to get from the baby? So that's something I am not sure about. So if anyone does have an answer to that, that would be awesome, or perhaps even a theory. Wrapping this entire ramble up into a quick set of steps, all you need to know is that the crabs breed easily. You need a decent sized tank, five gallons will do. Keep your male to female ratio at one male to two females. Give them enough hiding places, feed them well, and just wait. That's all there really is to it. Once your environment's set, they will breed, and they will breed very easily, very quickly, and eventually you'll get overrun, unless you decide to have natural selection take its course. If you decide to attempt to breed for profit, there's a few things you need to consider. And the first one is that these crabs ship very badly. So a lot of the time they'll arrive dead on arrival, which a lot of you have already uh, explained to me has happened to you guys. So something to consider if you are going to sell these crabs, try to do it locally. Otherwise, you're going to have to deal with uh, dead crabs when people receive them and you're either going to have to refund the money or send them new crabs, which again, the process will repeat. So just something to consider. Uh, it's not great for the crabs to just essentially be born to die in transit. If you are adamant on selling them for a profit, just make sure you spend a lot more time researching how you're going to ship them than anything else. So you need to make sure they've got a heat pack if it's winter. You need to pack them with enough water to survive so they don't dehydrate and dry out and you don't want them to get shaken to death. You're also going to make sure you use the express post option, so try not to go any more than one to two days. And if you're somebody who is still trying to buy crabs or find crabs, don't get them from international sellers. Try to get them locally because anything shipped internationally is gonna take a long time and get smashed around a hell of a lot. So definitely try to avoid it. There's a lot of guys on Facebook trying to sell crabs coming straight out of Thailand and places like that, and this is definitely a bad idea. Well, I think that pretty much covers everything. So if you have any questions, don't forget to drop a comment and I'll get back to you. And another thing, check out my everything you need to know about vampire crabs video because that covers all the other stuff you might not already know. So if you're setting up a new tank for vampire crabs and you're just getting into it, that's definitely one to check out. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you in another video.